inflation is a monster. It's a hydra. And as you know, it's seriously afflicting all Canadians and Albertans at present. Why is this? Why was this massive problem allowed to exist? Well, put simply, the federal government printed too much money too quickly, and now its value has turned sour. Now, we tend to believe that this has happened predominantly in the last two years, and it has. But in fact, over decades, the supply of money has been continually increasing in Canada, meaning that the inflation was also increasing. True, the burn was slower, but it was there nonetheless. And then, of course, as the bailouts happened and as COVID shut the, the entire country down and the federal government gave more and more and more money to corporations and individuals, more cash was injected into the economy. And as such, the value of money decided or didn't decide to, but actually declined. Now, some might argue that we didn't see massive, massive inflation at the grocery store and other areas of goods in society. And to be fair, at the start, that's true. But why was that? The reason is clear. When government printed these mass, this massive quantity of money, it didn't just give it out to individuals. It didn't just give it out to those who are receiving a $2,000 COVID benefit check. In fact, most of that money was transported to wealthy investors, to massive businesses. But what do those investors do with that money? What did they do with that money? Of course, they already have bicycle tires. They already get their haircuts. They already have everything they need at their homes precisely because they're wealthy. And so what they do in response is, with that extra cash, they invest it in the stock market. And so the stock market, in fact, if you scrutinize it and research it, right at the beginning of those bailouts, began to climb and climb and climb into massive heights into the stratosphere when you're talking about stock markets as it was continually inflated. Of course, now groceries and other more menial goods in society, simpler goods in society, have caught on as well with this inflation. Groceries are soaring. Gas prices are soaring. Goods that you and I use every day are climbing higher and higher and higher. Not only so, but suppose that you're a senior. Suppose that you've saved up for 50 or 60 years in order to enjoy retirement. What will happen to your savings? Well, of course, they're not indexed with inflation. It's not like if I have $100 in my savings account and inflation is massive, that that $100 is transformed into $200. On the contrary, that stays stagnant, that stays stable. And so I'm able to buy less than what I could before. My savings don't weigh, so to say, nearly as much as they did in previous years. They aren't nearly as valuable. And so I'm not able to live the life that I was expecting to live. This, for obvious reasons, is a problem. How do we combat this? Well, the first and most important thing to do is stop printing money. We cannot continue to print at these exorbitant rates without expecting the market, the currency market, to make a serious correction. The second and most important, or the second and perhaps the most important thing is to ensure that the federal government, whichever federal government it might be, is not able to print money at their wit and at their whim. You see, governments like inflation. It's a hidden tax. It gives them, for at least a moment, a little bit more money, and it seems to boost the economy. It makes them, at least before all of the consequences hit us heavy, look not too bad. They look pretty good. In this, because those politicians are self-interested, they will continue to print, and they do continue to print. This, in an independent Alberta, cannot continue. It has to be that the federal government is taken totally out of the monopoly of the money supply. Right now, neither you, nor me, nor I can print currency. Fine, but only the federal government can. And that's a problem, because if they're being unresponsive or, or irresponsible with that currency, as they have been, we suffer the consequences. But what if you introduced, perhaps, currency competition into the market? What if you introduced one or two other currencies, like a gold standard, perhaps, or even Bitcoin, if an individual chooses, into the market? Well then if a government was being irresponsible with their own currency, or if a fiat currency was printing at such exorbitant rates that, again, inflation was moving out of control, they would have to rein it in. They would have to become responsible. Because if they weren't, if they weren't being responsible, if they were still printing and printing and printing some more, then individuals like you and me would switch, would switch over to different currencies, more stable currencies, currencies that hold their value better. And, and longer than the fiat currency currently does. So this is just one of the ideas we're proposing for an independent Alberta. The government has to get out of the business or the monopoly of the money supply. They have to 
enter into a competition market, just like everything else in the economy. Let the individual Albertan choose what currency is best for him, and by doing so, he protects himself not only from inflation, but from control by an oppressive government as well.